Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new to the channel too, wanna to hit the subscribe button. That would help me out immensely. Before we begin today's video, merch. Finally have merch for sale. Over to my left-hand side, we have our Aim High Drive Low die cuts in all metallic colors, starting with silver, purple, gold, red, and just a plain Oxford white. If you're interested, DM me, $5 each. Also, what just came in are my Aim High Drive Low flight tags and my other brand, Social Outcast. These will also be for sale too, $5 each. So, DM me on Instagram and or I will leave a link to the website in the description below. Today, we will be working on the Prelude. I ordered a ton of stuff the other week and everything is slowly but surely coming in today, tomorrow, and over the weekend. And unfortunately have a handful of stuff too on back order. Parts I bought were coilovers, uh, energy bushings, and a whole bunch of suspension components. For an example, what I just received today are the BB6 NPC aluminum billet and drop forks. Let's go ahead and check these out. Since I'll be running coilovers with high spring rates, I need the extra shock travel since I will be static at a fixed right height. Shout out again, NPC Motorsports. I had these on my Integra and they worked beautifully. And also these are, I would say about a year old and they finally made them for the fifth gen and fourth gen Honda Prelude. So again, these are billet aluminum. These will give you, these will lower your existing ride height two extra inches, thus adding two extra inches of shock travel. These are well-crafted, of course, in the United States of beautiful quality. Ooh, very nice. Don't wanna scratch it. Honestly, I'll probably ceramic coat these just, just because. And also they had an option to add hardware. And since I want the Prelude to be like the Skyline, I'm going to go all out on this final form for the Prelude. So I never heard of 100 proof hardware, but I guess this is some super high quality stuff that NPC Motorsports has available for you for an extra $30. I just went silver on silver, but yeah. So here we have the Prelude, unfortunately, going to be sitting on jack stands for probably a good month, month and a half, hopefully not two months. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, a lot of stuff I ordered is on back order. Starting with the coilovers, I did special order some BC Racing coilovers. I went with their BR system with the Extreme Low kit. Their extreme low kit, I think the coil body is on back order, so they're waiting for that part. And they're being custom made in valve for the high spring rates I chose. Since again, I want to keep this car on coilovers, static, whatever you want to call it, but I don't want to go too crazy with the stance. So I went with 16K up front with the Swift Spring upgrade and 14K in the rear with the Swift Spring update. So they sent me an email saying the part should be here June 1st. So crossing our fingers, June 1st is when it comes in. They build it real quick and send it to me. In terms of suspension parts, I did order brand new lower control arms with bushings and new upper control arms with new ball joints. These ones are 30 years old and when I was on air ride, I did kind of notch them a lot and the bushings inside are also 30 years old. Also with the lower control arm too, I didn't have to buy a new one, but came with a package deal, saved me like a hundred bucks. So got new lower control arms with new bushings and also bought new front ball joints. For the rear, I did clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna hit it one more time with degreaser and just hit it with the pressure washer. I did buy new lower control arm energy bushings because these ones are just 30 years old and also new trailing arm energy suspension bushings. Again, these are all gonna be polyurethane. 
so my ride should definitely improve. I also ordered the Godspeed rear upper camber control arm so I'll have adjustability. It is kind of sketchy just running this ball joint reversed so if anything I might put this up front since I'll have the extra shock travel from the MPC drop forks to get some crazy camber but I'm just gonna experiment with it. I don't want to run a crazy amount of camber like I used to. So this Godspeed control arm should be in here hopefully in this video today. So essentially in this video we're just going to disassemble the front and rear control arms. We'll also clean up the wheel wells, decrease it again, hit it with soap and hit it with the pressure washer and hit it with a thick coarse brush. The front I want to get as clean as I possibly can. We'll cover up the shock tower holes there so water doesn't get in the engine bay. I'm really stoked to see the Prelude Reborn and pretty much looking like the Skyline straight out of factory. I did source out a new to me JDM front clip. With the JDM front clip it's pretty much the side marker on the bumper is not there. It's just flush and is relocated on the front guard here. I found that for a pretty good deal and it looks like it's in good shape so I might send that sometime tonight. I also did find a JDM H22A with I think like 40,000 miles on it for a decent price with the transmission as well. I just need to source the harness, the clutch pedal, and pretty much almost everything else for the manual transmission swap. So hopefully that motor and transit is still available by next month and if so I will buy it. So UPS says that they're going to be here any minute now so we're just going to go ahead and tackle the rear upper control arm. So what you do, we're going to take these two bolts out and to access those, pop your trunk. You have one of the bolts towards the back side and you have one bolt here towards the front side to access this bolt efficiently go ahead and pop this johnny out go in and through this hole you should be able to access that bolt i think there's 16 maybe 17 don't quote me on that but before i do that i'm gonna go ahead and take this cotter pin out loosen this bolt get my trusty ball joint separator out and you know set this loose if you're not going to reuse your ball joint i would say full sand it and just smack that bolt there with a hammer but since i will be reusing these spc extreme ball joints and since these are like 70 dollars a piece i think they're even more expensive now i'm gonna go ahead again and use my trusty ball joint separator you can just pick this up at even Walmart, AutoZone, or O'Reilly's. All right, so I got one of the rear upper arms out. The top bolts for these are 17. You do have to take them out completely, so you have access to take these bolts out of the upper arm, which are 14, both the nut and the bolt side. Just got done taking out the driver's side, rear upper control arm, SVC extreme ball joints. Installed 180 again. I mean look how much thread I have there Not a whole lot, but this is blue loctited. So it is secure Bushings on this one again 1999 Could definitely use some replacement. I'm gonna see if O'Reilly Auto Parts or AutoZone has like I would say universal sizing so I can just burn these out or pull saw them out and put the new ones in But look what just showed up Shout out Godspeed Project. These are the Honda Prelude rear camber arms. Oh, look at that, made in China. Already opened it up, of course. Focus. Ooh. So, I mean, right off the bat, nothing crazy. It's just a rear upper control arm. I mean, honestly, I'll probably get the same amount of camber, if not a little bit more, from this opposed to the ball joints here but honestly with this I just want to run like 
negative two or negative three degrees, just enough to get like good fitment with the R33 GTR wheels. Don't wanna run negative six or seven degrees because I'm trying to phase out of that camber stance life, but we might have fun with these guys. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera. It does, <laughs> that's some orange peel. It's not perfect, the welds are, they're okay but it still honestly feels pretty durable and in person it's like a nice cherry red and it's got some nice metallic flakes in it in person can't really pick it up too well on camera but hey it'll get the job done and it'll add to all the finesse we have back here with the sway bar the megan racing toe arms and then this and the steel braided line so i mean this is the right side so it'll look something like this i'm just gonna go ahead and install it for you guys real quick i almost forgot to show you guys the hardware it comes with so you got these allen torque bolts here you got the sliding plate or the locking plate and then you got the sliding ball joint itself essentially it just looks something like that you have six bolts for added security again i would highly recommend blue lock tightening the tips of the thread here so these will adjust anywhere between positive three and negative three of the positive three and negative three degrees of camber depending on your ride height you can probably achieve up to negative eight maybe negative nine degrees in the rear but again like i mentioned i just want a solid negative two negative three degrees i still have to play around with the coilovers when i get them and a couple months crossing my fingers so what I'm gonna do right now is just I'm just gonna put them in with max camber just because that's how my Megan racing toe arms are set up one more thing I have to mention or show you before we install it so got the bolt got the washers and the locking washer control arm is upside down you got your sliding ball joint there Bolt will go on the bottom first like so and then you have the locking plate which will go on the top side to oh, oh don't fall to fully safely oh, secure it like so all right so i got the passenger side godspeed project upper rear control arm in and honestly fitment was near spot on not a single issue clearance is good all the bolts or torque down the spec it was actually easier getting the nut side of the bolt on because with the oem upper arms there was like a little flange that peaked over but definitely feels very sturdy the structural rigidity is nice on this guy again no nothing binds everything fits how it should got everything torqued down as well the bolt with the cotter pin in it so would highly recommend these arms for negative and or positive or zero camber in the rear. I'm so to feel how these ride compared to just the say ball joint, but I think with how the upper A-arm is engineered, the ride quality should improve immensely. Okay, so we just got done with the driver's side, rear, upper control arm. Fitment was perfect again. Nothing binds, nothing obstructs each other. Got everything torqued down to spec. And this side went, of course, smoother than the passenger side. So really stoked on how these are going to ride once I, again, get the coilovers in, as well as my energy bushings. So I'll be replacing the lower there, the lower there, and then the trailing arm bushing, which is just shot completely. Cannot wait to get that all replaced. In terms of the front suspension, I'm just going to do that tomorrow. My new upper and lower arms come in. So I'm just gonna save that for tomorrow's video and then we can install our NPC drop forks as well. So that is going to conclude this portion of the video. Thank you everybody again for the continuous of the support. Sorry if it was a little short, but I kind of want to divide each section into a separate video. So again, this video, we got the Godspeed project, rear upper control arms in, fit amazing, price is right, engineered, 
pretty well. I forgot to mention it is probably like a pound or two lighter opposed to the stock arms there. They're pretty heavy and I'm sure they will ride so much better than stock. And again, once I get the coilovers in and my new wheels, I'm gonna dial in the fitment. Again, not trying to go like negative seven, negative eight degrees camber. Just wanna keep it at a conservative negative two or three, whatever clears the wheel and gives me a nice flush fitment. But thank you everybody again for the continuous love and support. And if you're new to the channel and want to subscribe button too, that'd be awesome. And remember, aim high, drive low. We'll catch you next video. Take care.